Hello everyone and welcome to another Affinity Designer tutorial how to create custom brushes from objects and shapes. Up next. So inside Affinity Designer with a blank new document, the first thing I'm going to do is tap on the document menu, tap on the grid, tap to show the grid, and I'm going to set the grid mode to standard and I'm going to leave everything as is. So I will go ahead and grab the pen tool just going to lay down some anchor points here, some nodes. Then switch to the node tool. Just make sure this is a perfect shape here. And that all the nodes snap to the grid. Great. I'm going to give a, a fill color of my choice here. So this is the first shape. For the second shape, I will tap on the edit menu, tap to duplicate, and I'm going to scale this up. I'm going to move it into place, change the fill color to this perhaps. And then let's see, I'm also going to change the width of the stroke right now. Pretty much we don't have any width. So I'm going to set this to 20 points. There we go. But we also have to give the color to the width. And then inside the Stroke Studio and inside the Advanced Options, Right now, the alignment of the stroke is at the center. So I'm going to set this to the inside. Great. Now we'll tap and hold and bring this under the first curve. And just make sure that both of these are centered in relation to each other. So we'll mark you select those two. Move into the side. Create another duplicate right there. Okay. Mark you select those two. Just move them down just a bit. And I think everything looks great so far. So I will grab the pen tool and I will create a straight segment that goes from one end to the other end. All right. So inside the Stroke Studio, again, inside the advanced options here, I'm going to set the cap style to butt cap. All right. So I will create another duplicate. Move it at the bottom here, and then I'll switch to the pen tool. And I'll just create three nodes here. And this time around, we're just going to have the same fill color, the orange color. All right. This, this looks great. So I'm just going to select this with the move tool and just create a duplicate, move it to the right side. I will grab the node tool. Select that node and bring it in right here at the edge. Okay. So again, with the move tool, I will create, select it and create another duplicate. Move it to the other side, to the left side. Tap on the Transform Studio and I'm going to flip this horizontally. Great. All right. Now inside the Layer Studio, I will just select all of these and I'm just swiping to the right select multiple shapes here, multiple curves. I'll create another duplicate. And inside the Transform Studio, I'm going to flip those this time vertically, like so. Great. Back on the Layer Studio, I will select all of these curves here, and I will tap and hold and bring them under the straight segments. So they kind of hide here, right? So I will mark you select all of these, and then I'm going to group them. And inside the layers options, I'm going to give it a specific name that would be custom brush. All right. I think we are ready to go to the next step, which is going to be the export persona. All right. So let's go ahead and switch from the designer persona to the export persona. And inside the export persona, we will use the Layers Studio to create slices from layer content, which means we will take contents and turn them into slices. So I will go ahead and tap on the Slice Selection tool, tap on the Layer Studio here, and then with the right layer selected, in this case, we only have one layer, I will go ahead and tap to create a slice. Now looking inside the slice window, 
I can see that I have some gaps on both ends of the slice. So what we need to do is we need to zoom in very close and slice that from edge to edge. Otherwise, the slightest gap will appear on the brush. So for that, I will switch to the slice tool. I'm going to zoom in quite a lot here to just make sure that I do a perfect job. All right, and I'm going to go to the other end and also bring this in with a slice tool, like so. All right, great. Now, again, looking on the slice window here on the top left, we have the size of the slice. We have the name of the slice, which is custom brush. This is going to be exported as PNG. We have the color space, which is RGB, and then a bit depth of eight. Great. So what's next? Well, we're going to tap on the Slice Studio. And then as you can see here, we have two layers. Well, we're not going to use the background, so I would toggle off its visibility. Then I will tap on the Slice options. And let's see, we can tap to change the name of the brush. In this case, I have already done that, so I'm going to cancel that out. But then we have the export options. As you can see here, Affinity Designer comes with a plethora of export options, and I highly recommend you experiment with these and see what works for you for your own project. And then we have the increased level of resolution of 1x, 2x, or 3x. I'm very okay with 1x, so I'm gonna go back to the Slice Studio. And one more thing I would like to do is tap on the Preferences Flyout menu to choose where our slice will be exported and choose an export folder of our choice. In this case, I have already done that. I have chosen my export folder. So all I'm gonna do is tap on the export icon here and we get the message here, the current item has been exported to your chosen folder. All right, so let's go ahead and switch from the export persona to the designer persona. In this case, inside the layer studio, I will toggle off the visibility of the custom brush because we finished designing our brush. Then I will tap on the plus icon to create a new vector layer. Then I will tap on the brush studio. As you can see here, Affinity Designer comes with a lot of different categories of brushes, some incredible brushes here. But in this case, since we are creating our own brush, it's only logical to create also our own category. So for that, I will tap on this flyout menu, tap to create a category here. Now, by default, we get the name of brushes, which I'm going to actually rename this to another custom name. So again, I will tap on this flyout menu to rename the category to my brushes, for example, right? And then again, I will tap on this flight menu. And I'm gonna go ahead all the way at the very bottom here that says new texture image brush, which means this will create a brush stroke based on the color values of a raster image. So tap on that. And that takes me inside the iPad here where I exported the custom brush to, from the expert persona. Here it is, it says custom brush. I'm going to tap to select that. And now we are inside the brush editor. So inside the controller, we have the pressure. In this case, this is not gonna be any pressure, all right? This is just the geometric shape here we have. But what is important is inside the body, instead of a stretch, we're going to change this to repeat because after all, this is going to repeat along, let's say, a path. So as you can see here, it, we get a preview how this is going to be repeated along the path, which is great. So for now, I'm done. I'm just going to tap OK, right? And then I'm going to tap on the pen tool and just create a straight line as such, all right? So for this line here, I'm going to go ahead back on the brush here. I'm just going to tap to apply the brush on the stroke which means we need to go to the color studio and make sure that there's no stroke color as such. And here is the brush. 
The thing is, as you can see here, this is way too small, at least for my taste. So I'm going to tap back on the Brush Studio, tap and hold to get to the contextual menu, and then tap to edit the brush. And then we again, we are back on the brush editor. And the only thing I'm going to change here inside the properties is I'm going to increase the width of the brush here, all right? Something along those lines. Tap OK. And if you want to see the, the change, you need to tap on the brush again. And here it is. That looks great. But let's not forget that this is still an editable path, which means I can tap on the node tool. I can tap to create another node. Now, this node here is a sharp node. Let me bring this up for a second. Here it is. What I can do is at the bottom of the context toolbar, I can convert this from a sharp node to a smooth node. There we go. I can do this here. I can also go inside the Stroke Studio and under the advanced options here, I can have a different cap, a different join, and so on. All right, there's a lot you can do here. So what else can I do? Well, this let's select, let's create a circle actually. Create a perfect circle. And again, we're going to apply on that circle, the brush, just make sure that there's no fill color and also there is no stroke color. Okay, this is one thing. Back on the Stroke Studio and inside the Advanced Options, definitely we need to change the alignment to from the inside to the center. There we go. See that? And one last thing I would like to mention is that once we create the texture brush, we can really change the color of it. Whatever the brush stroke is when we exported it as PNG image, this is going to be the color of the brush. So here's an example of how to create a custom geometric brush for your own projects. I would like to thank each one of you for visiting my channel, watching the inspiring lectures and project tutorials. Do not forget to subscribe and share the knowledge.